Benvenuti, buongiorno, welcome to a, um, another love letter from Italy. And this one uh, has to do with stories regarding driving in Italy. And I have a few stories about driving in Italy. It's, a, uh, it's an interesting country in which to drive. Um, it's, um, you know, a place where, um, where uh, driving is not quite the same as driving in the United States, for example, where I live. Uh, uh, and I do get a question from time to time from friends who know I spend time here and they ask about driving here. They say, is it a, um, is it a safe thing to do? Is it, you know, is it dangerous? Are Italians, um, you know, really aggravated drivers? Do they get mad? Do they shake their fists? Do they curse you? Do they make nasty uh, gestures and so on? Uh, and the answer is no. <laughs> no. It's absolutely not true. Uh, driving in Italy is, um, is a lot different than driving in the United States, for example, and driving in Florida where I, I normally drive. Um, a few things are different. One is that the, uh, that the cars are smaller. Uh, I've uh, driven here, I've had three different cars driving here in Italy. I don't remember the first one, it was several years ago and it was uh, down in, in Calabria, down in the south of Italy but probably a Fiat, because that's pretty much what you find in the rental agencies here. Uh, last year when I was here, I had a, uh, a, a Fiat Cinquecento, a Fiat 500, a small one, with a three-cylinder engine, just three cylinders, and a manual transmission, which most cars here have. And it was a fun car to drive. I went a lot of places in that car. I pushed it to the limit, and it was fun. Uh, this year, I had a, uh, a Fiat Punto, and it was a cool car. It was a car that was actually loaned to me by friends. Uh, they were very kind to me. Uh, they, um, you know, uh, they did me a huge favor. Uh, this year, the cost of rental cars in, in Italy is insane, and and uh, so they stepped up and said they'd let me borrow their their extra car, and they did. And it was quite a fun car to drive around. I didn't drive it very much. I used used it to go to the market, to the supermarket, to. Uh, to the train station to visit friends and things like that, uh, but just kind of locally in the little area that I was living in. Um, it's, it was an interesting car because it was a dual fuel car. It ran on both gasoline, which here is called benzina, and, uh, and also on natural gas, which is here is called metano or methane. And uh, the, uh, the methane car was really fun. A lot of people like methane <laughs> powered cars here because uh, for one thing it's a renewable resource. You can, you know, make it out of, you can make it out of all kinds of things. It's a natural uh, uh, product of decomposition and it also uh, is an environmentally clean fuel, cleaner than, than regular gasoline for example. And it, when I first got here it was much cheaper. Um, it was, oh, I don't know, a Euro 10 or 15 per kilogram because it's sold by kilogram. It's not sold by uh, by liter like gasoline is. And um, and by the time I left, it it actually went up overnight. It went up by almost double the cost of methane. And it's really a problem here in Italy right now. The cost of fuel has gotten really high. Uh, no one's quite sure why. And um, you know, I know people who are actually. Um, you know, leaving Italy for the winter so they don't have to heat their house and uh, are going off to a warmer climate. Uh, the cars are smaller, uh, the, uh, the actual um, roads are smaller, they're a lot narrower, even the superhighways, the autostrada, and there's just not really any road rage to speak of. I, I rarely come across anybody who who um, gets angry about another driver's antics. Uh, for example, the other day I was driving uh, to a nearby town to go to a weekly market and it was a weekend or no it was a, maybe a Wednesday and there was a uh, group of cyclists on the road four or five cyclists riding two abreast on this twisty road through the valley and uh, you know nobody got excited nobody got angry they waited until it was safe to pass and then the cyclists pulled over in a single line and spread out and cars were able to get around them without uh, you know, without any kind of danger, and nobody was shaking their fists, nobody was honking, nobody was making rude gestures. It was just the way it is. Uh, there's a lot of different kinds of vehicles on the road, and, and the roads are multimodal. In addition to, in addition to uh, cyclists, of which there are a, a whole lot here in Italy, there uh, there are also uh, pedestrians walking on the roads, and including me. <laughs> 
I like to walk for, uh, even when I was living with a car, I like to walk to get coffee in the morning because it's nice to, to you know, walk off the, the uh, calories of the brioche that I'm gonna have with the coffee. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's also uh, other vehicles. There's, uh, there's uh, agricultural vehicles. Um, tractors and little tractors and big tractors and combines and all kinds of agricultural vehicles on the road. Uh, there's also big giant uh, international trucks that come down these small roads sometimes. You know sometimes you have to kind of pull over and make room for the big truck to go through and again nobody gets too upset by that. <laughs> nobody, gets a, nobody gets angry. They just let it happen and, and chuckle about it and, and uh, you know what can you do? You know? <laughs> Um, also, another kind of vehicle on the roads around here are APES. APES are incredible. I, I got to say that of all the vehicles in Italy, and I, I've, you know, driven cars. I've been on different kinds of bikes, regular bikes, electric bikes. I've been on a motorcycle, but um, for me, the very, very best of all the vehicles in Italy are the APE. APE is a word which, in Italian, uh, is signifies B. So B, like the bzzz, the little B that stings you and so on. Um, the ape sounds like a B, and that's why it's called ape. It sounds like when it goes down the road. It's a cool vehicle. It's kind of like if a uh, Vespa, Vespa motor scooter and a pickup truck, you know, mated. <laughs> this is what would come from that union. It's a cool vehicle, and uh, I would love to have one. Sadly, they're not really... Uh, able to come into the United States legally because of, uh, of the safety and, and pollution requirements and so on. There is um, an electric oppie now that's out and I'm, I'm real, I am paying attention to that because that would be a fun one to have. Um, one of the reasons that it's, people aren't quite as aggravated as, as aren't quite as angry on the roads here is that uh, there are very few amateur drivers it is difficult to get a driver's license here in Italy. To get a driver's license in Italy, you have to be at least 18. Uh, that means that uh, no 15-year-old uh, learner permits, no 16 and 17-year-olds going to the, to the uh, hamburger shack on Friday night to hang out with their friends. That kind of stuff doesn't happen here. Uh, even if you're 18, you can't just go get a driver's license. You have to go to the doctor first, and the doctor has to certify that you are physically and mentally fit to drive a car. And once you do that, then you go to a driving school. It's not something you study in high school or in, even in college. You go to a, a separate driving school. It's not inexpensive. It's several hundred euros to take a, uh, uh, a course for a normal driver's license. If you're taking one for a license for, let's say, uh, uh, a bus or a commercial truck or something like that, it could be uh, over ten, over a thousand euros for uh, for a maybe two thousand euros for a class like that. So, it's expensive. Uh, you have to not only take the theoretical exam, which covers things like uh, like both the traffic laws, but also first aid and the uh, little bit about mechanical things, so you know about your car enough to deal with problems when they happen. Um, and you also take a road test. And sometimes people take months and months and months to uh, to get it, and a lot of people fail their uh, fail their test the first time. Well, if you're a member, uh, if you're a citizen of a country uh, that is a, uh, a delegate to the Convention on International Road Traffic of 1949, <laughs> there is another option, and that is to get an international driver's permit. This is mine. Uh, well, this is mine for this year. These things last a year. They have uh, they have your picture in it. They have uh, some information on your uh, in many different languages on your on your uh, national driver's license. So I have a Florida driver's license, and between the Florida driver's license and the international driver's permit, you need both of them, and uh, you're able to uh, show them to the police if you have a problem, an accident, or you're stopped for a traffic infraction, or just stopped because they're doing a check. Um, it costs about 20 bucks to get one of these plus the cost of the, uh, plus the, cost of the photographs and uh, it is a, uh, it's an easy thing to do. Another thing that's different about driving in Italy is that there are places in Italian cities and almost every Italian city including this one including where I am now that you can't drive unless you have a special permit. You can't enter that part of the city 
with a vehicle. Uh, these are called ZTLs, ZTLs, uh, Zono Trafico Limitato. It's a place where traffic is limited to people who have a special permit to drive in that area, people who live in that area, they're residents of that neighborhood, or they have a business there, or they're, um, they have, um, they're a commercial company and they have to go do services or make deliveries, excuse me. Um, it's, um, it's a big deal and, um, and you know, it make, means cities have less traffic in them. Now, even the little tiny city that I live nearby the last uh, month and a half that I uh, would walk to every morning for my coffee, they had a ZTL and it was a very small city. Uh, the ZTL consisted of two square blocks within the city walls of this city. Uh, you know, I don't know that it was really super enforced, but uh, but ZTLs normally have a camera, and when you go through the, Z, the, the ZTL boundary, the camera looks at your li your your uh, license plate, and it it confirms that you have a permit for that area. And if you don't, it just generates automatically a ticket to send you, and it might take a month or two to get it, but you will get it if you're in a rental car. The rental car company will get it, and they will pass it on to you. Well, that's one of the automatic things that happens in Italy. The other thing is that there are automatic speed cameras in a lot of them. There are signs near almost every municipality, and you might have seen one in the video that I, I put up here as part of this, of the driving into Marciano. It said uh, speed controlled by electronic means. Uh, I've never seen a, a speed trap in the city, but there are a lot of them around, uh, around the country, around the countryside. Often there will be a sign telling you that there's a, a speed camera ahead, excuse me, and, um, and uh, sometimes there's not. But uh, if, if you use an app like Waze, for example, it will normally let you know that there's a speed camera ahead. Um, and there are a lot of them. So, uh, you know, you just have to kind of figure out where they are. And when you come close to a speed camera, if other people are slowing down for some unknown reason, don't pass them, slow down too, because that might be the reason. They might be coming into a speed zone. Um, the applications like Waze and I think maybe Google Maps show where the speed cameras are. Even the temporary ones, even the speed traps that the, that the police uh, put up sometimes. Well, since you can't drive into cities, into most cities, uh, there is usually some sort of parking on the outskirts of the city and usually it's the historic center of the city that you can't drive into. I mean I'm sure you can drive into the outskirts of Florence, well I've done it. And you can definitely drive into the outskirts of Florence but when you try to cross the, uh, the Arno River and go into the historic center of the city uh, it's a problem. So, uh, so there are parking lots. Now in a big city like Florence the parking lots are, are expensive and they're you know they're inside buildings in the city but in the little cities, the little cities in the countryside, there are often a free or inexpensive parking lots uh, really close to the, uh, to the city walls. Um, when you find one of these, and they, you're, they're on maps, you can find them on Google Maps and on Waze and other places, and they're, you know, just look for parking near the name of the city you're looking for, and it will show you where all the parking is, or free parking near. Um, normally, if you find a parking lot, and they have the big universal P sign like uh, all parking lots everywhere do. Um, if you find a parking lot and if the lines in the parking lot that delineate the spaces are white, that means the spaces are free uh, normally. Now you look for a sign anyway. There's a sign that says maybe it's free except for certain hours when it's closed or it's closed for cleaning a certain time or whatever. So you need to look for the signs. But normally if there are white lines in the parking lot, the parking is, is free. Uh, sometimes there are blue lines in the parking lot, and this does not indicate a handicapped space as it, as it would in the uh, as it would in other places. It indicates a paid parking space or a time limited parking space, and you need to look at that in that case. You need to look and see if there's a machine somewhere. There's usually a machine in a paid parking situation. You go to the machine. You put as many euros in as you need for the amount of time you want to spend there. It spits out a ticket, you put it on the dashboard of your car, and then you go off and do your business and hopefully come back before that expires. Uh, there are also some places that are free but are, uh, are blue striped and they have a sign indicating you have to use a parking disc, a disco. And these are uh, a little, well, in Italy, we use a 24-hour system, so 0 through 24. You, um, let's say that it's, uh, it says that you can park for two hours. So when you get to the spot that you're going to park at, you take this little 
little dial thing, this little paper dial, and you put it at the time you arrived. So let's say you arrived at 10 a.m. You put it at 10, you leave it in your window, and so if the parking enforcement person comes by and they see that it's you know 11 o'clock and you came at 10 and it's a two-hour space and everything's cool, but if they come at two in the afternoon and you came at 10 and you entered 10 on your dial, then you may have a problem and you may get a ticket. Um, discos are uh, something. There are also yellow striped parking spaces in Italy. Uh, these are normally reserved, oftentimes reserved for a handicapped uh, sticker. Uh, there will be a, a sign saying what it's for normally. Uh, sometimes they're for taxis or buses or limousines or whatever, uh, official cars. Uh, sometimes they might be for the town doctor who makes house calls and she has to be able to get to her car quickly and, uh, and not have to, you know, walk a half a mile to get to her car. So, so uh, sometimes people who have special uh, situation, special needs or special situations are able to get a reserved parking space. Uh, headlights are on in Italy. Uh, not everybody does that, but uh, I think um, legally you're supposed to have your headlights on. Uh, you have to have a seat belt on if your car is equipped with seat belts and uh, you have to um, stay, off your, stay off your dang telephone. Don't talk on the telephone. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> Well, that's it um, uh, for uh, uh, driving in Italy. It's a fun thing to do. I, uh, I like it. You can go places you couldn't get to otherwise. There's, there are cities and towns in Italy that are just gorgeous and have amazing, amazing things to look at, amazing food to eat and so on. And if you didn't have a car, you wouldn't be able to get there. Uh, so don't feel worried about driving a car. Be, just be calm, be tranquilo. Be, uh, you know, be thankful and be, uh, you know, pay the karma forward when you're driving here. Uh, it's the way people do it. It works really well. Thanks to those of you who have subscribed to this uh, little, uh, this little uh, fun thing I'm doing. And uh, if you haven't, if you feel like doing it, please push the subscribe button. Hope you have a great day. Hope wherever you are, things are wonderful for you. And I look forward to uh, talking to you the next time. Ciao.